Hello, my name's Danny John Jules, uh, actor, singer, dancer, biker, and many other things that I won't go into. <laughs> Fantastic. Um, how did you get into motorcycles? Uh, I got into motorcycling, well, legally, um, about uh, 16, 17 years ago, when I was um, doing a show in Derby called Soul Train at the Playhouse Theatre. And the photographer of the show he used to sort of turn up on his Thundercat every day looking really cool and I thought, man, that's good. Yeah, I went down to the uh, city centre and just um, booked my direct access and took my test. It was that simple. That simple. Fantastic. And ever since you've been into bikes? Yeah. But just, um, you know, about a month later I was, I was on a Kawasaki ZXR 750. And um, yeah, I was rolling with the big boys. So, in your when you're kind of acting on set, have you actually? I mean, we've seen, we've all seen you in Death in Paradise, and you're riding the um, the sidecar. Um, but have you been able to bring? Because that was your decision, wasn't it? You or that your suggestion? Um, well, uh, I ride the bike and sidecar in Death in Paradise. Um, in the script originally, it said Dwayne turns up on a, a Harley Davidson with a sidecar, and you know the idea of you know having this Harley Davidson and sidecar in the middle of Saint Marie, which looked like it cost more than a police station, just wasn't going to work. So you know that's when I suggested that you know it should be some old colonial war like vehicle that would have been more realistically left on the island um, from, you know, its colonial days. And hence, that's how the old bike and sidecar came about. But originally they wanted it to be a Harley, you know, just, I think everyone would agree that would have been wrong. Yeah, that would have been a But have you managed to bring in biking into any of your other roles that you've done? Um, no, well, the, <laughs> the first time I nearly um, could have been on a bike in a um, in a bit of TV was uh, I did a Bonnie Tyler video years ago and it was one of those kind of rock kind of mixing you know the sort of what would you say jousting and rock and roll and the idea was that these two guys were going to joust on motorcycles dressed as you know knaves and or whatever knights, but just on on motorcycles with um, lances, mm. and it's funny enough. It, 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 he just got an award actually. This stunt man called Clive Curtis, and he actually did the stunt in 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 the, in the uh, video. Cool. Yeah, he's actually in this magazine. <laughs> Look, and I'm not being funny. There he is getting his award, <laughs> Clive Curtis. Coincidence. Isn't that weird? Yeah. <laughs> and there he is, and that's the guy that stunted for me riding the motorcycle and jousting. That so, was many you, years ago. Were you slightly gutted you didn't get to do it yourself? Um, I, I wasn't really, um, because it was night, it was on grass, he was on a, a motocross bike, he, you know, it, it was difficult. Mm. Riding with one hand with a proper lance, like not one of those, <laughs> I'm talking about one of those things you see in the King Arthur movies. Um, yeah, Bonnie Tyler video, man, that was crazy. When was that then? Mm. God, that was 25 years ago, more. So when you're actually on set, obviously, you, you know, when, you, when you're not filming, you've got some time off, because obviously you spend a... For Death in Paradise, you're spending a long time out in Guadeloupe. Yeah. Do you get a chance to go riding? Well, on the last series of Death in Paradise, obviously, you know, five months out there, um, riding the bike in a, a TV show, you, you don't really get to do a long ride. You're, you know, you're just doing these little, it could be 20 yard ride. It looks like you've been riding for two hours and you t turn around the corner, pull up, get off, you know, but I do, Funny enough, I had a um, a BMW Dakar that I had the use of 
to one guy that ran a hotel and he was a biker and you know what bikers are like and he said anytime you want to go out for a blast just let me know so I did and then just um, you know go blasting around the island so I don't really get a lot of time it's it's quite hairy riding the motorcycle over there because they I mean these, jug these juggernauts are wind winding roads flying up and down the road so yeah um, you think you'd have to pick your days Sunday bit preferably so you've done um, five TV series now that revolve yeah. around bikes three uh, which are more kind of European road based, yes and then two two uh, sort of yeah more adventure yeah so what, what do you what do you get out of them because I don't think you, you really describe yourself as an adventure rider no but what, what do you get out of them well I mean to me it's like I can I can go around, um, you know, going to little holidays or, you know, I don't really have holidays as such. You know, I'm, I'm pretty much, for the last five years, I've been working, holidaying, as they say. And you, you, when you're traveling so much and been away so much, a holiday actually seems weird. It's just another plane that, you know, um, so the bikes actually make a big change when you go out, you know, it is like your holiday. You know, that, that is basically, has been my holidays for the last five years. You know, getting out and about, seeing countries and actually going out and, and seeing the places you visit. You're going by road, you know, rather than sort of getting off a plane, getting into a taxi, getting to the hotel and then sort of going to the usual haunts where everyone says you should go. But, you know, if you go to Morocco, no one's gonna say, why don't you go to that isolated village up there and just walk in, which is what I get to do on those trips. And um, I, I, I get to see a lot more of the countries. I get to meet lots more of the real people instead of sort of concierges and bellboys and, you know, the usual stuff you see on holidays and pool attendance and the aerobics class in the pool and all, all of that stuff you know so I mean you've now on these trips you've had quite a quite a wide range of bikes you've done it on a 125 you've done it on an R1 you've done it on a Tenere. Super Tenere you know for you what is what is the best way of doing that kind of travelling I I think the, the, the best way is um, Ideally, if you know, is to obviously pick the right bike for the right job. I think all of those rides would poss possibly could have been um, a, a lot less um, enjoyable if you was on the wrong bike. You know, obviously on the tarmac it doesn't matter, so you can pretty much get away with anything. But you know, if you've then got to, oh got to cross a ravine or this or do that. I mean, you know, um, yeah, it, it could definitely change the, the enjoyment of the ride. So I think in that case, you've got to plan your ride for whatever bike you have. If you, if you haven't got the right bike and you've got to have the right roads or the right access. So I think everything is all in the planning. And your bikes, you tend to, uh you tend to paint them pink. Yeah. Well, it was the, the first bike um, ride um, was, you know, the Isle of Man. And my thing was that um, uh, it was, the question was what, what would the cat's bike look like? And out of that came the whole pink thing and, you know, the original cat suit in Red Dwarf was pink and, uh, you know, he'd have a pink bike and, you know, everything else would be pink and, and flashy and outrageous. And that's how the whole pink thing started. But then it caught, it caught on because people actually didn't like it. They just, you know, it was not meant, you know, meant man ain't supposed to have a pink bike. So, of course... It's like a red rag to a bull, you know. <laughs> so, but it's it, it's it's caught the imagination anyway. So, 
you know, and and, and also it's you know it's a good charity colour, and we you know all the all the all the rides have uh, have been attached to a charity, so it works on many le levels. Yeah. And in terms of, I mean, you've you know you're you're probably best known for your character of Cat in Red Dwarf, which has obviously been now running for twenty five years. Isn't it? 26 years. 26 years now. So it's the longest running British yeah. comedy show, uh, series. Comedy, yeah. But what did you, um, how did you come up with the character of the cat? How was that? You know? Well, I, I mean, I really didn't have to do that much. I mean, it was all written. I mean, whatever, whatever you saw in episode one was what was written by Doug Naylor. Um, uh, it was just a matter of, you know, um, finding the right language, accent, and then what he looked like, because the, the cat's original drawings, what the, what the original design was for the cat was, I just um, thought it was a backward step and then, you know, got on, got on my bike and, if you know what I mean, excuse the pun, um, uh, to, to bring him way into the future. Um, originally, the design was he would just look like a blues brother with a pork pie hat and a skinny black suit. And I said, "Well, you know, they've already done this in Blues Brothers, and you know, it's old news." So I said, "I wore a better suit than that to the audition," which I did. And um, so basically, we just copied the suit that I wore to the audition and made it salmon pink. And all those kind of characters that you. Not the, not the, the, no, well, the, I mean, the characters were every every catty character that I could think of. You know, I went through a whole list of people that that would have been cats, and you know, from Cab Calloway, James Brown, Jimi Hendrix, Screaming Jay Hawkins, Little Richard. Um, God, there were so many of them, and I always went back to the same thing. They always they always had big suit suits on, you know, um, and it was always very colourful. You know, purple king, the, 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 the you know, little Richard, uh, Richard Pryor was pretty much the, the rhythm of the cat's characters. Richard Pryor, facial expressions and and his rhythm of talking. Okay. So there was lots to choose from. Yes, I mean the cat's not really original. No, nothing's original. I just took the best of all of them and the best bits and. It's an original combination. Though. It's, a, yeah, it's an amalgamation of those guys, you know, because the singing, I mean, it's really, I mean, James Brown, you know, I mean, it's not rocket science, the, ow, is James Brown, I mean, it's, but people like it, even though they've seen it a million times from James Brown, but the, the ow, that's a cat, that's what cats do, James Brown was a cat, you know. Um. And talking about other stuff you've done, obviously you talked about Death and Paradise and um, Red Dwarf, um, but you've brought bikes in a certain way into your own short film, Bucky, haven't you? The, your, yes. The trike. The trike. The trike. Your kind of well, the, the whole thing about Bucky, again, in my, my short film started... My, my son used to have a little plastic... Um, rally um, uh, tricycle and he loved watching MotoGP and he'd lean with the guys around the corner with obviously the camera on the back of the bike so he would actually sit and watch it and do the leaning with them and that and then he would bomb around this kitchen table just hours and hours and he you know wooden, fl wooden floor with the, and he would just be back in the the, you know, backing it in round the corners, and you just go around and doing it and doing it and doing it. And and to me, what it was, it was, um, it, it, it was, it, there was a great innocence about it. And and I always hark back to the tricycle that I remember when I was a kid, and it was one of the ones that had um, what I called the dustbin, the, the bread bin at the back, you know, with the lid that opened up, and you could store your stuff in there. It was like the boot. Um, and that was a lot of the influence to, you know, that innocence and, and then that innocence being broken 
you know, or taken away. And 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 that's when I started working on the story. You know, what would a kid carry in the back? You know, what do you put in there? And then uh, I won't give it away, but then something very naughty goes in the back, and then. Uh, it unravels a, 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 a kid get basically through no fault of his own having his innocence taken away <laughs> yeah so yeah no it's a well it's it's kind of difficult to tell it without giving away the story so well, you'll have to wait see it? When's it? When's yeah it? no I'm, I'm I'm actually in the process of talking about a broadcast for it so um yeah, and it will it will it will be seen. It's just trying to do it in the, the, the small gaps that um, appear in schedule at the moment. Um, yeah, so I'm looking forward to letting everyone see it. But it, yeah, it's fun. It's uh, it was murder trying to find the tricycle. Yeah. You couldn't find one. I couldn't find one anywhere. That particular one that I wanted, and it ended up having to come from a museum because it's an original and it had to be original. It's got a different sound, it's that rattle. <laughs> and you know, the tires were not air, they're just big lumps of rubber around the rim. Yeah. You know, it's, and it has a completely different sound and you know. Yeah, that was, uh, it was all fun, nerve wracking. So, Last question then. What is next for you in terms of biking? You got any plans for anything else specifically at the moment? Um, Caribbean. A Caribbean one. Yeah. Go ho back home. You know that one. Dominica. Well, where else would you want? Would you wouldn't? You know, it's a mountain. In the sun. Instead of snow. I've done mountains in snow and you know no one's done a Caribbean trip Thanks, I haven't seen anyone do a Caribbean one yet so I thought that was the, the, the next one because I'm out there anyway yeah. so I mean it seems silly not to I've got a five month working period and then in a week off in the middle a ferry to my mum and dad's home island and um, ride around there. Very nice. Yeah, you lots of hills. Is it going to be filmed? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. That's fast. yeah. It's, well, it'd be easier, you know, because um, there's a good thriving in industry out there. Lots of young filmmakers. I mean, you've got a filmmaker then working for the BBC out there, so you know what would be some young DOP out there would be would be you know carting lights around on a BBC production, which is what happens. So these guys, obviously the local crews that they the, the, the people that would end up working on a BBC production are pe local kids who are doing their stuff, you know, and you know what who might be a DOP over there or what they call them operator might not get to operate on this they'll probably end up you know carting stuff around the set that's the name that's the name of the beast the nature of the beast that um, you know the, the BBC carries a bit of weight it's just better to get it on your CV in it mm. cool cool all done all done me done my niece ringing me what Sorry, the hell?